Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before we begin the reflection on Dua al iftitah for the first week, inshallah, we're going to have reflection on Dua al iftitah The second week, we're going to speak about marriage and family, the institution of marriage and family. And that will take us about two weeks, inshallah ta'ala, during this beautiful month of Ramadan. But before we begin, few of the frequently asked questions regarding fasting. Uh, inshallah, for the first week, we're going to mention three or four masail every time, every night. Number one, three people should not fast. It's forbidden for them to fast. And it is a sin. It is a sin for those people to fast. Not only they don't get any reward, but they are sinning. Number one, a person who's sick. A person who's sick, whether this sickness is chronic, long term, and the doctors advise him not to, not to fast. Let's say he has a kidney problem, things like that. And the doctors unanimously said to him, it's bad for you, bad for your health. Or it could be a flu, simple flu. Someone is not feeling well today. Those people should not fast. And when they break their fast, they compensate after the month of Ramadan, if they can. If they can compensate and make it up, then they must make it up. But for someone who has a chronic disease, who cannot fast throughout the year, that person pays something called fidya. It's mentioned in chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah. Fidyatun ta'amu miskeen. Fidya means, <clears throat> means uh, 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 ransom, something like that. And he or she would pay 750 gram, 750 gram, which is less than a kilo. The kilo is 100 gram. 1,000, sorry. The kilo is 1,000 gram. The fidya is 750. Three quarter of a kilo of food. What is food here? Food could be rice. It could be wheat. It could be, it could be barley. It could be dates. Something which is fundamental. A fundamental food. 750 gram. Today, today, when I ask the experts who go to the market, one of them is my wife. She says that makes almost $3. If you want to purchase rice, then 750 grams of rice today in the market is almost, almost $3. So that person who cannot fast at all, he pays 30 times 750 grams. 30 meaning 30 days. At the end of the month, he or she would buy the food from the market and give it to, the, to those who are needy. If there are no needy in your state, in your neighborhood, in your country, then you may send it to other countries. But you have to ask people there to buy food with it and give it to the poor and the needy. So this is number one, a person who is sick. Number two, a person who is traveling. When you travel in the school of Ahlul Bayt, the school of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt السلام, it is mandatory to break your fast. Mandatory. You cannot fast while you are traveling. And of course, there are extensive rules of traveling. There are details. One, one example of that, when you travel, leave here, if you live in Orange County, you are going into another state for three days, five days, nine days. You cannot fast unless you stay there for minimum 10 days. If you stay minimum 10 days, then you may maintain your fast. Sometimes you have two homes. One home here is in Orange County, you, you call it home. Another one, let's say in Arizona, you also call it home. So if you travel between these two homes, even if you stay in Arizona for two days or one day or three days, less than 10 days, you may, 
you may continue your fast because you are going to your home. You are going to your home. But when you travel, you have to travel in the afternoon. If you travel in the morning, you cannot maintain your fast. So if you want to go to your next home, second home, or into another state where you are going to stay 10 days minimum, then you have to leave in the afternoon, after the Adhan, the Dhuhr Adhan, the noon Adhan. If you leave before, you break your fast during that day. This is number two. Number three, those who are not allowed to fast and they should not fast, women who are experiencing their period, also during the period, they should not fast. Inshallah tomorrow. One more, one more. Uh, some people ask about rinsing your mouth during the month of Ramadan. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay to rin rinse your mouth as long as you don't swallow. You can rinse it with water. You can rinse it, uh, rinse it also with uh, mouthwash. But be careful, don't swallow the liquid. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalatu salatu was salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana sahib al-asri wa al-zaman. Ajjal Allahu ta'ala farajah wa sahala makhrajah. وَجَعَلَنَا مِنْ أَنصَارِهِ وَأَعْوَانِهِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مسدد للصواب بمنك This is the beginning of Dua Al-Iftitah which has been narrated, composed and narrated by our 12 Imam Al-Imam Sahib Al-Asr Wal-Zaman عجل الله تعالى فرجه and it was transferred to the Mu'mineen during the time of the Imam by one of his ambassadors. The Imam had four private ambassadors. One of them is Muhammad ibn Uthman ibn Sa'id al-Amri. So this ambassador, he transferred and conveyed the, this dua, dua al-iftitah to the followers of Ahlul Bayt and the Mu'mineen uh, during the occultation of the Imam, the ghaybah, the minor ghaybah of the Imam, not the grand one. So the Imam begins by this sentence, Allahumma, O oh my Lord, I begin my commendation and compliment, thana, thana is when you compliment someone, when you commend someone. I begin my compliment to you with a praise. Allahumma in yaftatihu thana'a with your praise, bihamdik. Now what is the difference between hamd and shukr? Sometimes they intertwine. Hamd and shukr, sometimes they intertwine. But the scholars, among them scholars of language and Arabic literature, one of them is an Egyptian man by the name of Ibn Mandur, Al-Afriqi al or Al-Misri, Ibn Mandur. He has an encyclopedia, a dictionary, very huge dictionary of Arabic language and Arabic literature. He says the difference between Hamd, which is a praise, and shukr, which is a gratitude, there is a difference between them. Hamd is something, and shukr is something else. Hamd is a praise, and shukr is a gratitude. But the difference between them is that hamd, hamd is more encompassing, more inclusive, more general than shukr, than a gratitude. How is that? He says, because shukr, you thank people when they do something for you. They do something good, a service, help, you know, anything. So you say thank you. In return, in return of this act of goodness and kindness, you thank them. You become grateful to them. You say thank you. But hamd, you may praise someone even if he does not do anything good for you, specifically for you. Maybe he does for others. He didn't do that goodness, that kindness, that act. He did not do it for you. But because he did it for others, he deserves hamd. He deserves the praise. And then the shukr, shukr you return. 
when something does good to you, you tell him thank you. You don't tell him in the beginning thank you. You don't walk in the street and tell people thank you, thank you, thank you. They're going to say thank you for what? So <laughs> they have to do something, something positive, something good, something commendable. Then you thank them. But when it comes to the hamd, you may praise the person in the beginning. You initiate the praise. And he says, this scholar says, that the hamd, هو الثناء على الجميل سواء تعلق بالفضائل أم الفواضل. Praising someone either for his or her character or for his or her deeds. You praise a person, he did not do any good for you, but he has a good character. You know, that this person is a noble person. This person is very kind, is very generous, is very humble, is a scholar, is a servant, is someone who helps the society, someone who does favor to mankind. So you praise him, even though he didn't do anything specific for you. He has good character, good standing. So you praise him for his character or you praise him or her for their what? For their deeds. He did something good for your family, for your country, for the society, for the poor, for the needy. So you praise him. So this is the difference between a praise and a gratitude, between hamd and thanks and, and, and a gratitude and, and, and shukr. The <clears throat> hamd is more inclusive. A'ammu min ash-shukr. Alhamdu a'ammu min ash-shukr. More general and more inclusive than a praise. So here Imam, Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salatu was salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Before he begins asking God in this long dua that you, you saw earlier and you read earlier tonight, he praises God. Why he praises God? Because God is worthy of the praise. Because of his numerous, countless blessings and bounties and gifts and mercy and love and help and affection for mankind. So he is worthy of praise. Allahumma inni aftatihu thana My Commendation and my <clears throat> compliment, I begin it with saying Alhamd. And we're going to say where this word Alhamd is mentioned. The beginning of five chapters in the Quran, in our book, the first chapter and many other chapters, they begin by Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praising God. So before he asks him, he extend his praise. Before he says, oh God, please help me here, help me that, I need this, I need that. He says, I praise you. And these are the teachings of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Imam Ali alayhi salam says, إِنَّ الْمِتْحَةَ قَبْلَ الْمَسْأَلَةَ Before you ask, praise God. Before you rush into asking him, I need such and such and such and such. Hold on a minute. This is your Lord. Your Lord who created you, who provided you, he catered for you. Before you came into this life, he continued his favor and his blessings and his gifts on you. So before you rush and ask him, oh God, give me this, give me that. Prepare yourself for the night of Qadr, my friends. The night of Qadr is the most important night of our life. The night of Qadr. So we have to know how to ask God. What is the protocol? What is the etiquette of asking God? Before you tell him, I need this and that, praise God. Praise him. Say, Alhamdulillah, because you've done so much for me on, and, and, and for mankind. Amir al muminin says, once you ask God, da'awta Allah, فمجد. Glorify him first. First, begin with the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And if we, my friends, if we look at others, how others are living, if you travel to other parts of the world, especially third, third world countries, Africa, India, Middle East, and you see how people are living there. <clears throat> see how food is scarce. I was watching a clip yesterday of an Arab and Muslim country at the beginning of the month of Ramadan, and the man was interviewing men and women in the market, in the marketplace, all of them. He interviewed about 20 men and women. They said, we cannot afford buying food. Buying food, we can't afford because of the inflation, because it is too expensive, because of the devaluation of our currency. We can't buy food. So when we look at others and how much they suffer, and we compare them to ourselves, we live in a big blessings, in big ni'mah, but we don't pay attention to it. When do we pay attention to it? When? The day we lose it, God forbid. The day we lose these blessings and these gifts, then we realize, we wake up, oh, I had a house, I had a car, I had a family, I had food, I had health, I had this and that. So we have to praise Allah. Allahumma inni aftatihu thana'a bihamdik. One time a man, a wise man, a sage, was advising his son. He was telling him, son, three things do not compromise them. Stand very firm when it comes to three things. Don't compromise. Don't give concessions on a three things. Number one, you have to eat the best food in the world. Number two, you have to sleep in the best bed in the world. Number three, you have to live in the best house. So the son turned to his father and he said, but you know we are poor, we can't afford the best food, the best bed, the best house. The father answered him, he said, when you eat only when you are hungry, very hungry, starving, that food is going to be the best food. You are not going to complain. Why our kids nowadays they complain? Because they have too much food, too much options, because parents spoil their kids. When they open your fridge, how many types of food and vegetable and meat and fish and everything you have in it? Overflowing. This is why our kids, they don't like this. This is not good. This is not tasty. This is this, this is that. They are, they don't appreciate because we keep feeding them. But the day they starve, if they starve for two days, then they're going to eat any food. And that food is going to be very delicious. And they're going to thank Allah for it. The second thing he said, the bed, if you want to sleep in the best bed, you have to exhaust yourself during the day. If you work very hard, if you wake up at 5 a.m. and you work very hard, you leave your home and you exhaust your body, at the end of the day, when you come home, you throw yourself in bed, that bed is going to be best than, better than the Marriott Hotel, better than the Seven Star Hotels, and you're going to sleep like a baby. If your body is tired, but if you are sleeping, lazy the whole day, of course you don't enjoy that bed. And the third thing he said, how to live in the best house. He said, if you respect people and be kind to people, people are going to host you in their hearts. And their heart is going to be your home. And the heart, when people put you in their hearts, that is the best home. That is the real home. So we have to give thanks to Allah. We have to give thanks to Him for His blessings on us. But sometimes we don't pay attention. So 
Allahumma inni aftatihu thana'a bihamdik. Always praise God, day and night. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Begin your day with this sentence. End this day. End your day with this sentence. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And then the Imam says, Wa anta musaddidun lissawabi bimannik. O oh God, verily it is you through your bounties and blessings. Bimannik. Man means blessings and bounties. You are directing me to righteousness, to the rightness, sawab, rightness and correctness. Because we don't know what is right. We the humans, we really do not know what is right for us. Sometimes we, we ask for things. We ask God for things that are bad, too bad for us. Too bad, too dangerous. We ask him for certain relationship. We insist on him. Oh God, makes this relationship happen. I want to marry this person. I want to be with this person. And God would answer, but after a few months, it turns to be that this is not the best relationship. This is not the best marriage. We were under the impression that I want to live with this person for the rest of my life, happily ever after. But after a few weeks, it turns to be, no, this is not the right person for me. Sometimes you ask for the best work. Oh God, I need to get this job, this office, this department. And God says, okay, you're insisting on me. I'm going to provide you with that. But after a few months, you realize this is not the best job. This is not the best career for you. You are in the wrong place. You are in the wrong job. Sometimes you insist on getting this house. I only need this house, nothing else. But after a period of time, you realize this house is not, not good for you. God says in chapter 17, Man, through his haste and ignorance and persistence, he... He prays for something which is bad for him, thinking that this is good. He prays for something which is evil for him, terrible for him. How many times we made the wrong decision? We insisted on God during Laylatul Qadr, during other nights. Oh God, I need this, please. Please, please, please. If you don't do this for me, I'm going to die. God, at the end, God is going to answer. God is going to answer. But then after a few weeks, you realize, no. No, no, no. You are insisting on the wrong thing. Why? Because God says in his book, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا He's hasty. He says in his book, ظَلُومًا jahula. He is wrongful and ignorant. And God says in Surah Al-Ma'arij, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ خُلِقَ هَلُوعًا Man has been created هَلُوعًا إِذَا He becomes impatient. هَلُوعًا means he is anxious. He is very anxious. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعًا When evil touches him, he becomes what? Impatient. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ but when goodness and a prophet touches him, he becomes manu'a. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ manu'a. He doesn't give. When God gives him, he abstains from giving and helping. God says, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ Accept those who perform the prayers and maintain their prayers, their relationship with God. Those are patients. Otherwise, we are impatient. And we are ignorant. And we always ask God for the wrong things, not the right things. And soon we discover that what I asked God was not appropriate. It was not good for me. It was not healthy for me. Therefore, Imam al-Sadiq says, How should you ask God? And this is the month of asking. This is the month of supplication. 
This is the prime time, the prime season. This month, the month of Ramadan, is the time of du'as and asking God. But how should, should, how should you ask Him? Any, any question? Anything? No, not anything. Listen to what Imam al-Sadiq says, how we should ask God. He says, وَعْرِفْ طَرِيقَ نَجَاتِكَ وَهَلَاكِكَ Know what is good for you. What is good for you and what is bad for you. You have to know what is. Najat means salvation, goodness. Halak means to perish. So you have to know first. Be wise. Open your eyes. Think about what is good for you and what is bad. Don't be emotional. Don't be hasty. Don't ask God the wrong things. Ask Him the right things. So you have to be wise. وَعْرِفْ طَرِيقَ نَجَاتِكَ وَهَلَاكِكَ كَيْ لَا تَدْعُ اللَّهَ بِشَيْءٍ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ فِيهِ هَلَاكُكَ So you do not, when you are aware of what you are asking for, when you are aware, you don't ask God the wrong question. You don't insist on Him to do something bad for you. وَأَنْتَ تَظُنُّ فِيهِ نَجَاتُكَ You are asking for something which is perishing for you, it is going to make you perish and destroys your life, but you think that this is good for you. Be wise when you pray. Give it some time. Don't ask any question. You have to reflect. This is a month of reflection. Cut back on your engagements and dedicate much time during this month for meditation, for reflection. Sometimes you need to, to stay alone in your room. Cut back on other engagements. Cut back. Yes, this is the month of a friendship. We spend time with families and friends, but also you must spend some time with your own self. You need to reflect. You need to meditate during this month to see what is good for you. Look at what you did in your life. Look at your past. Revisit your past and see what is good and what is bad. And sometimes we don't know, we ask. We ask those people who have experience in this life. So Imam says, وَأَنْتَ مُسَدِّدٌ لِلصَّوَابِ بِمَنِّكَ Oh God, you are the one who directing me to correctness, to the rightness. It's not me. It's not me. Tasdeed, what is tasdeed? Tasdeed in Arabic means Hitting the target. Some people do not hit the target. Hitting or aiming or pointing at the target and hitting the target. This is tasdeed. Saddadak Allah. The dua saddadak Allah means may Allah make your journey, your journey on the right path. Not the wrong path. On the right path. And God says to the Prophet, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى During the battle of Uhud, it was not who, it wasn't you who pointed his arrows at the enemy and hit the target. It was your Lord. Sometimes we think it's me. This is my achievement. I scored these results. I was hitting the target. I was correct. No, it is God. It was God. Have you seen sometimes when you have a birthday party for your little ones, two years old, and they break, they bring the cake, birthday cake, what do you put at the top of the cake? Candles. Sometimes the kid is one or two years old, they blow into the candle, but they cannot extinguish it. Have, have you seen that one? If you haven't, wait until you become a grandfather. You will see you. Believe me, you will see this. So they try once, twice, three times until the father or the mother comes and then they blow into it. But the kid gets excited. He thinks he did it. Huh? He thinks he, he was the one who extinguished the candle. He doesn't know that there is someone behind him doing... doing <laughs> Sometimes we think we scored these results. We achieved them. It's not us. It's Allah. We praise ourselves. It was me. Yeah, me. 
my hard working, my intelligence, my money, my, you know, it wasn't you. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says to the Prophet, even you, Ya Muhammad, even you. In the battlefield, I was behind you. Yes, you were carrying the sword. You were carrying the arrow. But it was me who made your shot accurate, hitting the target. وَأَنْتَ مُسَدِّدٌ لَلصَّوَابِ بمنك. One day the Prophet وسلم, said, <clears throat> he made a beautiful dua for one of the companions. He said to him, very beautiful dua, very, very beautiful dua. He said to him, سَدَّدَ اللَّهُ رَمْيَتَكْ May you be always guided and directed by God so you don't go astray. You don't go astray. God is the one who's, who's pointing you to the right direction in your life. Imagine if God is pointing you to the right direction, then you don't have any problem in your life. You don't make foolish mistakes. You don't make bad decisions because God is guiding you. The GPS of God is with you, showing you the way. Tasdeed also in Arabic means, have you seen sometimes when you go, nowadays we don't do this anymore because we have GPS. But I remember when I was a child and we were traveling with my father for long distances. Sometimes we stop and we ask about the direction. So people come and he says, go straight, make a left, make a right. So they give you direction. Sometimes a person is so good and so kind, not only he is going to give you the direction, he's going to, to tell you, follow me, follow me, I am going to take you to your destination. It happened, it happened, it happened. <laughs> I remember one of our friends, he came to England about 30 years ago from the Middle East. And he was driving in London for the first time. And he didn't even have a driver's license. He told me the story. He said, I was driving and then I got lost. And he doesn't speak English, so he, not, he, he cannot read the, the signs. He kept driving, driving, and he went outside London. He doesn't know how to come back at that time. No, no, no GPS and no cell phones. So he, and, and the night, the night fell and he, he was late, he was worried, his wife, his kids. So he had to go to a gas station and he asked for a taxi and the taxi was guiding him. He gave the address to the taxi and the taxi brought him all the way back home. So sometimes a person says, I will take you, don't worry. I will take you to your destination. It happened one time I was in Lisbon Portugal, I tried to go and, 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 and see the underground there. They have the metro, the underground. So when I went down there, I tried to buy a ticket, but all the signs are written in Portuguese. No English sign. Amazing. European country, but they don't have any English signs. So I could not buy the ticket from the machine. I had the money, the coins, the euros in my hand, but I did not know how much to put, where to put, which one to press. A mother with her daughter came to my aid, alhamdulillah. The daughter spoke English. So I told her, listen, I gave her all the money. I said, take this money, get me a ticket. So she said, yeah, I'll get you a ticket, but you follow us because we are going to the same destination. We're going to downtown. Sometimes Allah holds your hand and he takes you to the destination. Not only he shows you the direction. No, 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 no. More than showing you the direction. He says, I hold your hand. You are with me. You are safe. Don't worry. This is the tasdeed. وَأَنْتَ مُسَدِّدٌ لَلصَّوَابِ بِمَنِّكْ Inshallah, the rest of the dua in the upcoming nights. Allahumma khfar للمؤمنين والمؤمنات. والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات إنك على كل شيء قدير tomorrow إن شاء الله صلاة الجمعة is at 1 p.m. and the iftar إن شاء الله again at 7.19 p.m. with the salat in the evening and also Saturday we have the iftar but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and and, and Wednesday, 
We begin at 8.30 with Dua Al-Iftitah, without Iftar, inshallah. So you can spend time with your family members and with your friends, inshallah. وَعَجِّلِ اللَّهُمَّ فِي فَرَجِ سَيِّدِنَا وَمَوْلَانَا صَاحِبِ الْعَصْرِ وَالزَّمَانِ If you want to donate for the Iftar, please speak to Brother Hajj Samir Amiri. وَعَجِّلِ اللَّهُمَّ فِي فَرَجِ سَيِّدِنَا وَمَوْلَانَا صَاحِبِ الْعَصْرِ وَالزَّمَانِ وَإِلَىٰ أَرْوَاحِ الْمُؤْمِنَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ تَوَابَ الْفَاتِحَ مَعَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَىٰ مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ